What is up, YouTube? It's your girl, Keisha Nicole, and I am back with another video. So for today's video, I do have a story time for y'all. Y'all blew my last story time up, and it has still kind of, not really blew it up, but it did numbers compared to my other videos. So I got another story time for y'all. This time, I actually do have receipts. It's really just screenshots and messages, because in the last video, y'all were on my dick, like, you said you got receipts and don't got receipts. Y'all, that last situation could have got me kicked out of school. That's why I have to be minimal on receipts. This don't got nothing to do with school. So I'm gonna give y'all a little rundown of basically what the story time is about. It's basically, one of my friend's friend, my friend Kennedy introduced me to her friend Angel. We clicked at first, but it didn't last very long. And now I am no longer cool with Angel and Kennedy is no longer cool with Angel either. So, I got all my screenshots of my handy dandy phone, got my sparkling water and my hookah, and I was just ready to give y'all the rundown. She said she wished it was two of me. Next day, like in the chat, I said, hey, book, Angel Booking. This is our group chat with all of our friends. I see it say, for the focus, six hoes versus Houston, Texas. That was our group chat. She texts back, I said, you know my braids at Marshall K. And I said, I need my shit dragging to the floor for $30. I was joking. She was like, God damn, I got you. Cool. So I said, for 30 with a question mark because I was joking, but you dead ass. She said, shit, I got you. I'm gonna hook, hook you up for 30, all right. So that's when I got to knowing that we was joking for real. She said, I got two braids for you. Then our other homegirl texted and was like, she want her shit done for 32, boom. I said, damn, I was deposit ready. She was like, damn, that's the whole, bitch, that's the whole appointment. You know, just, just a kick in about it or whatever. Cool. Then I told her, but Fredo, how much I want my shit like to my knee, like how much for that? So I asked for the size, I told her I wanted medium braids. She told me I'd give her a piece of my ass. And then she was like, she just playing, but 150-ish. And then she was like, how much um, do I have? And then she said, make sure my head not big like Ken's. I'm just like, my head is not big like Kennedy. We do not have the same size head. Kennedy head, like, stew. she got a stewy head. So I'm like, no, my shit's smaller than Kennedy. So she said, okay, you're good then. Keep in mind, this is way in February, like a month before the appointment. So in between this, we all cool. We vibing, we hanging out. She comes, we go out one day. And I asked her again, because I'm the type of person, I'm going to keep asking you to confirm. I said, you still doing my hair for March, right? She was like, yeah. I said, 150? Yeah. Then another time we hang out, it's me, her, and then our homegirl, Jelly. We're at my house before we go to a party. So I asked her, um, Angel, you still doing my hair next month, right? At this point, the appointment is like in two weeks. I'm like, you still doing my hair uh, next month, right? So she was like, yeah, what date? We didn't have a date yet, but I knew like I wanted to do a few dates before my appointment. I'm like, I have to see what my work schedule is like. Cool. So she tells me, oh, she was like, yeah, I'll do your hair for a hundred though, because I do need more content and I want you to be my brand ambassador. I'm like, shit, that's not like a deal to me. Like, first of all, I really didn't care about, let me state that now. I never cared about how much the hair costs because I knew it was going to be pricey. But the fact that you're throwing lower prices at me and I'm already going to Puerto Rico, like I'm going on a whole trip, yes, I'm going to take that because that's more money for me to spend while I'm on vacation. Cool. So I'm like, country was cool. I'm fucking with it. I'm down. You my bitch. I'm your bitch. Like, I'm fucking with it. So we start turning up, vibing, drinking and stuff. Boom. The day of the appointment comes. I want to say the appointment is March 8th. I text her that morning. And was like, you gotta wash my hair, what you wanna eat? Cause I typically don't have appointments, hair, lash, nail appointments, anything. I usually bring my stylist or whatever, Starbucks or some food. So she told me what she wanted. Then we ended up getting on a FaceTime call because Kennedy ended up going early that morning. Listen, y'all start listening heavy right here. Kennedy ended up going early that morning to get two braids cause she had somewhere to go. So Kennedy ended up buying me, her and Angel Starbucks. So she bought us all three Starbucks, then went to Popeyes Y'all, listen. Then Kennedy went to Popeye's and bought us every flavor of them new wings they got. You know, them new bone-in wings or whatever. Bought every flavor. And when I say every flavor, I mean like an eight count of every flavor. So that's like five flavors. Just know how much money. They ran that girl for some money, right? So she ended up not paying Angel for her hairstyle, but we're going to come back to that. 
I was supposed to bring Angel food, but since Kennedy had got everything, Angel was like, she wasn't hungry. And I'm like, well, we already got food there. Like, I'm not too much tripping about going to get you food, right? So, she does my hair. I finish. I pay her the $100. Then I bring her home. Listen to that, too. Me and Kennedy was Angel's Uber. We brought this girl everywhere, picked her up from everywhere, dropped her off everywhere. Anytime we went out, we had to pick her up. And we also had to bring her home. And we all stayed on different sides of town. Like, I want to say, we all stayed about 15 minutes away from the girl. But it's the fact that the places we would be at would be like 40 minutes from our house. So to drive 40 minutes to your house and then 15, 20 minutes back to my house is crazy. But you're my friend, so I'm not too much tripping on it. You know? So I texted her the next morning and I'm like, how much for these braids? Everybody keep asking me, but per our discussion, I know it was only $100, so I'm not trying to tell them, oh, it's only 100 or 150 because I knew the 150 was discounted too because we were cool. She texts me back 7.25 p.m. I texted her at 8 a.m. She texts me back 7.25 p.m. 220 I was gonna give you a discount and I don't really give people discounts but my prices are already cheap if you want to send the rest on cash app Brazil you can I'm at work reading this y'all I'm on my watch like blinking silently I said angel why you told me a hundred when we talked about it if you wanted to 20 she goes I would have never did the style if we discussed the 100. My work is nowhere near 100, Buki. I would have gave you a style that would have fit your budget. So, yeah, I don't know what you and Ken, remember what I said, listen to Ken. I don't know what you and Ken been discussing, but my hair business should never be involved with my friendships. That's my job. At the end of the day, you have to pay bills just like me, and I understand if you don't have it, but next time I can't do your hair. So, I'm reading this like, huh? And it's more so the fact that you're texting me like I was a, I like a regular ass client that you didn't know versus your friend like you were coming at me a little sideways with the buki I would have never did your hair if I knew that yada 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 but this is something that we've discussed in the group chat in front of our other friends and with each other so like what what was the switch up so I'm like it wasn't a budget you said 100 and I asked if you were sure and you said yes because like I said y'all I never gave a fuck about how much the hairstyle would have cost I did not. If you would have told me 220 off rip, I would have paid you the 220. But when you said 150, I'm like, okay, that sounds nice. Then you said 100, that sounds even better. So, yes, I'm going to pay you $100. What? Then when I paid you the 100, you didn't say anything. Okay? She goes, I never said that, love. Did I text that to you or said it in person? I really don't remember that would have never came out of my mouth. Never. Maybe that's what you wanted to hear, but I'm not about to keep texting you about it because your hair is already done. If you don't want to send it, that's fine, but I'm just letting you know. Sorry. But I'm just letting you know I never agreed to give you a $100 discount. So I told her, originally you told me $150, then in a later convo it came down to $100. I had no problem paying the original amount if you would have told me 220 off rip. Here she go text me like I'm not this bitch homegirl. Talking about some baby, I never told you that. That's crazy. I thought you looked on my website like everybody else, which is why I asked you to bring cash. So that's when I sent this bitch screenshots from our group chat that I originally read off rip. I sent this bitch screenshots of her saying 150. And then I said, I'm so lost right now. Why didn't you say anything yesterday when I gave you the hundred dollars? She goes, yeah, before you ask for them small, for them to be small, I'm thinking you want medium. That style is small. Y'all, the braids were definitely medium because they were bigger than the braids that I had took out prior to that. And that stylist even told me them braids was medium. So I was like, I'm not finna argue with this girl about the size, size of these braids because I've been getting braids since elementary school. Babes, I know what small, medium, medium, large, and extra large braids look like, babes. Sorry, but you're not finna get over me on me on that one. I don't give a fuck. Then she goes, you changed your hairstyle three times. So to explain that, it was between the Bohemian Knot List, which is what I ended up getting, or the Fulani braids. Her and Ken were both telling me, oh, you should do Fulani braids, you should do Fulani braids. But I was scared because I'm like, my forehead's big. She was like, oh, your forehead won't look big. Ken really wanted me to get the Fulani braids, so she was pushing for it. But I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm going to just do the Knot List. She was like, okay. Then she was doing my hair, and I was like, ooh, should I do the Fulani? Because she started in the back, y'all. So I'm like, should I do the Fulani? She goes, well, it's already, it's already too late. I didn't start it. And I'm like, shit, that sounds good to me because I really didn't want to do it. So that was the whole, you changed your hairstyle three times. No, baby, you and Kennedy wanted me to do another style, and I was thinking about it. That's literally all that was. 
She goes, I'm not about to go back and forth with you about my prices and what I said. That's the price of what I thought you was about to get. So, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, that's that. If you feel otherwise, okay, cool. You don't have to sit in my chair again. That simple. So, I sent her another screenshot from the chat. I said, Angel, I'm not arguing with you because at this time, I'm not mad. I'm like, I'm confused. So, I'm like, Angel, I'm not arguing with you. I'm genuinely going off a conversation we had. I understand you might be irritated, but I literally paid you what we discussed. She goes, and you still didn't give me all of the money. I probably wouldn't be irritated if you gave me the 150 but come on, 100 so, baby, you tweaking out over 50 extra dollars. That's what you're tweaking out over right now. But my whole thing is, I would have paid you what you wanted if you would have told me that. Don't tell me something and then flip around 24 hours later and then say, <clears throat> I want more than that. Um, no, that's not how that's going to work around here. This is a laughing emoji talking about some, that shit don't even sound right, Bookie. So I said, you said 100 after the fact. I'm not playing in none of my friends' face or with none of their money. I would never do that. So I don't like the narrative you're painting right now because you definitely said 100 that day you and Jelly were at my house. You even said, yeah, 100 because I need brand ambassadors. She goes, I said that? Dumbass bitch. Maybe you should have confirmed before you came. I don't remember saying that. So basically, I just remember this bitch got short-term memory because, huh? Don't piss me off. I said, yes, you did, Angel. I have no reason to lie. She was like, so are you going to send it? Because I don't even want to give you a discount at this point. I feel like I done been played with. I have a genuine heart and I don't like to be played with. So I'm calling her because I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm trying to talk to her. I text Kenny because at this time, it's literally only between me and her. I didn't want to text Jelly and ask her if she remembers what she said because I didn't want to bring other friends into this. Like, this was something that me and her could have talked and squashed. But since it was Kennedy friend, I brought it to Kennedy. I didn't want to bring it to Jelly. So I call her. I'm like, answer. Like... What the fuck? So Kennedy's like, this bitch tweaking. What's she talking about? Why you and Kennedy playing with my business and yada, yada, yada. But our whole thing was is that even Kennedy got two braids, girl. That would have been $25. But even then, the way you texting us and like checking us is crazy. When we pick you up from your house, we go out to eat. Sometimes we're paying for your food. You hop in our car and demand us to take you here and there so you can get food. Like one night we went out actually i'm not gonna tell y'all this because this is a part of the story but it's like yeah i'm basically your uber we bringing you food we feeding you you need somewhere to chill you come chill at our crib it was just more so like a disrespect thing because it's like we do it for you but you can't do it for us oh i don't like that you know i don't like that energy you you want some weird shit so then the next day i want to say it's the next day March 10th. Yep, the next day. She FaceTimes me. She goes, she has, still has my location. So I know I was supposed to go to Puerto Rico, but something happened with that, so I ended up not going. So she calls me and was like, where that at? Talking about my boyfriend. And because she thought he did something to me, that's why we didn't go. And I was just like, at work? Like what? So she's like, why y'all not there? I seen your location. You were still at home. So I'm confused. So I'm like, I'm thinking, man, this whole beefing right now, we not cool. But you calling me on some overprotective friendship. So I'm just like, I guess. So we talked about the hair stuff on the phone. She was like, um, she genuinely didn't remember us having that conversation. She was starting her period, so she was a little irritated that she had went out last night. So when she said that to me on the phone, I was like, so that's what it was. You went out last night. The night after you did my hair, you spent $100. You was mad that you didn't ask me for more to have more money to spend. You was trying to make that money back. Because it was like, I get it now. That's why you wanted the extra $120 so you could make that $100 back that you spent when you went out last night. Like, girl, you was trying to play in my face and play with my money. But anyways, so yeah, we got on the phone. We talked, we hashed that out. And I'm like, well, I'm glad you finally called me. We talked about it because this was, I was getting irritated. Like, we were arguing over nothing. So we ended up, me and Kennedy were going out that night because she wanted to take me out so that I wasn't sad at the fact that I wasn't in Puerto Rico. So we were going to go to Washington Street. And if y'all live out here, y'all know Washington Street is like a street full of bars. You just bar hop. But Angel called me prior, well, me and Kennedy already had the plans. Angel called me prior to us getting ready to go. She was like, oh, she wanted to go somewhere to eat. Keep in mind, I'm also thinking she only called me because she needed a ride to go eat and she didn't want to go eat by herself. So yeah, we decide on a place to go. It's somewhere she wants to go. I'm like, Angel, that place is finna close in like an hour. It's gonna take us a minute to get there. I would really rather not go there because the place is out the way. So she's like, oh, I'm gonna Uber to you. I'm like, it's best if we just meet there because if you Uber to me, that's extra time. Like, I'd rather it's just meet there because it's literally finna close. 
she gets to the place before me and she's like oh there's literally a way and they finna close it they're not letting us sit here y'all the place was 30 minutes away from me so now I'm irritated because I'm like, Angel, I told you on the phone, they're from the clothes. I'd rather not go there. And you was so eager to go eat there. This is the second time she'd have made us go to this place, y'all. And we couldn't eat. So, yeah, we I get there. And I'm like, well, how far is the place that we meet in Ken at from here? 25 minutes. I'm like, damn. She hop in my car. I need to eat. I need to eat. I'm really hungry. I need to eat. There's a Taco Bell up the street. Please take me. So I put it on my maps. Up the street is 15 minutes. So I'm like... You can eat when we go to where we're going. Kid on the phone like, girl, they got taco trucks, food trucks, all this out here. I'm hungry now. I need to eat. I'm going to be mad. So I'm like, I really don't want to hear this bitch. So I take this Taco Bell, get the Taco Bell. I end up paying for this bitch food. Okay. I didn't even give me nothing. Not even a drink. I end up paying for this bitch food. So I'm like, you know what? Take that 25-minute drive to where we're going. We get there, and I'm just instantly, we get in, we vibing, we all vibing, we getting fucked up, we're drinking. But this bitch gets entirely too fucked up. I'll put some videos on the screen, like, this bitch is throwing up. We are having a time, but it's like, this bitch is throwing up on the concrete. She's falling over concrete, tripping in her throw up. It gets to the point where, like, we finna put this on Uber. So I put this bitch in an Uber. She orders Uber on her phone. I cancel every Uber until it's a girl Uber driver. So I put her in the Uber, I let her know, like, hey, I'm sorry, she's really fucked up. Um, I'm going to lean her this way, roll your window down. Can I have your number so you can text me and let me know when she gets home? Uber's like, cool. Uber texts me when a girl gets home. I cash at the Uber $40 because she was like, the Uber told me prior to that. She was like, oh, I understand. I've been there before. You know, I got her. I cash at this lady $40 just for the fact that, you know, you got her home safe. You didn't, you didn't try to do nothing to this girl. You let me know when she got home, even though I had her location. You also let me know when she got home, like, oh, we watched her walking out. Boom. Catch up the Uber. $40. So that was that um, night. This is March 10th and going into the 11th. Because we was all vibing. It was cool. I also texted her, hey, baby, text me when you get up and let me know you're good. So this is March 11th, that morning. She didn't text me. So I texted her at 8.48. Hey, bitches, you okay? She texted me at 10.34. No. Sorry, y'all, I'm jumping. She FaceTimes me, rushing, because she had a hair appointment. So I had to go do somebody's hair, but she had to do it at their house. So I'm like, girl, you good? She was like, no, I got to get to this hair appointment. I didn't shit it on myself. And, yeah, I tried to ignore it so bad. I'm like, this bitch, she shit on herself. Flip the camera, shows me her rug that she didn't wipe her ass with. So I'm like, Angel, don't tell nobody else that. Don't, don't tell nobody else that. Sure enough, we add everybody else to the group chat to the call. She tells everybody else in the group chat that she didn't shit it on herself. I'm like, Angel, please, shut the fuck up. Like, you did not have to tell these bitches that. That is embarrassing as fuck. You, you're a grown-ass woman. You don't tell nobody that. And before y'all be like, oh, you're bashing her. That bitch was never my friend. That bitch was never my friend. I don't give a fuck. Clock that T. So that night, y'all, this was... During spring break, so we was doing a lot of shit. So also March 11th, we was going to Ken House to chill, vibe. Hold on, y'all, I'm jumping over shit. That morning, <laughs> Kennedy called me after I got off the phone with Angel. It was just me and Kennedy. She was like, I'm finna come get you. We going to brunch. I'm like, shit, it sound like a plan. So we go to brunch. We vibe. Angel was doing hair all day. And then I'm out with Ken and her two homeboys at brunch. So we decided, oh, let's go back to the house. We gonna like paint, chill, you know, smoke and do shrooms <laughs> or whatever, whatnot. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a vibe. Like, let's do it. We started inviting our other homegirls. They don't all do shrooms or whatnot. We told them like, y'all don't have to do that, but you know, they gonna be drinking and stuff too, so y'all could do that. We've never been talking to peer pressure nobody, so. You know, we all gonna vibe with each other no matter what. If you're not doing it, she's not doing it. They still got that energy to where they can be sober and be around us high and we can all vibe. So we invited, ended up inviting Angel. She was like, okay, she gonna come after she get done with hair. We told her what the vibe was. We was like, we on some chill shit. We vibing, we turning up. Like, you know, but like some chill kickback stuff. So she's on the some I'm like, oh, I'm bringing my diapers. Because Kennedy told her, you can't come to my house if you don't wear a diaper. After she told her, <laughs> shit on herself. So she's on FaceTime showing us her diapers. Like, I'm wearing it. I'm bringing it. We was like, cool. So Angel finally gets there, and her energy is all the way off. Like, completely the fuck off. 
Keep in mind, y'all, we all, we drinking wine, we smoking, we on shrooms, we in here cooking. So we all vibing like, we here. This bitch energy was rock bottom. So they was telling her like, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you bucking at people? You mean mucking everybody in here? And she just like, I'm tired. I was doing hair all day. Leave me alone. So we was just like, okay. So me and Amia, that's one of our other homegirls that was at Ken's house. We head to the um, smoke shop to get some coals. Actually, we went to go buy hookah for Ken's house. Andrew keep calling me and not saying nothing. So I'm hanging up and then the call's like freezing. So I can't hear you anyways. So I hang up, but she keep calling me, calling me, calling me. I answer every time, but the call's frozen. So I hang up. She texts me, girl, you didn't have to hang up in my face. The fuck? So I'm like, I literally said, bye. I'm not finna do this with you. Cause I didn't know if she was joking or not, but I'm telling this bitch like, girl, calm down. Like I'm literally finna pull back up to the house and see you in 0.2 seconds. I just saw you 0.2 seconds ago. Like calm the fuck down. So, hold on. Y'all. Hello. Yeah. You have to call me back. I'm telling the YouTube story time. Oh, right now? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, that was Kennedy. So, yeah, I'm going to pull back up to the house to see you, girl. Calm the fuck down. Like, it was never that deep. So, I get back to the house. Kennedy's heating up, like, our leftovers from the place we went for. Oh, that's a neck. Kenny's heating up our leftovers from place we went to and I'm like, ooh, give me some of them greens. She's, that's my food, that's my food. No, the fuck is not, bitch. Last time I checked, me, Kennedy, um, Brazy, and his homeboy paid for this bill. Like, we split the bill down the middle. We paid for this shit. We put all our <laughs> all our leftovers in one box. We was like, we gonna bust this shit down when we get home. So they give her the food. She don't finish eating the food. She leaves the food on the table. So I'm like, but you did all that for what? To waste our fucking leftovers. Like, hard down arguing me about not eating the greens because it was her food. Anyways, so everybody's kind of at this point irritated with her because they let her know your vibe's off. We in here high off streams and shit. We vibing, we chilling. And you're, you like tweaking on people. Like you're trying to fuck up our high. We're not fucking with that. Like if that's your move, go home. She goes, oh, y'all know I've been doing hair all day. Y'all know I'm tired. You knew you've been doing hair all day. You knew you was tired. Why did you come here after we told you what the vibe was? You didn't have to be here. It wasn't like we was going to stop fucking with you if you didn't come. It was like, if you're tired, don't come. Or you could have came and went your ass to sleep. And that was that. You would have to come here with that negative ass energy. Like it was irritating everybody. So one of the dudes was telling her like, hey, calm down, chill. Like just vibe. She start arguing with him and we telling her like, chill. Like this not the nigga to argue with. This is not the nigga to argue with. Chill the fuck out. She not listening to us. She calls some nigga on FaceTime and puts the nigga in the camera. He like, she just put me in the camera? She on FaceTime with some nigga. She put me in the camera. So, like I said, y'all, doing shrooms. This nigga instantly think she trying to set him up. So he on some, bro, get this bitch out. He walk outside on the balcony, like, talking to his homeboy and our other homegirl, like, she trying to set me up. She put me on camera with this nigga. Like, he's tweaking. But we understand why because we're on shroom. So we like, Angel. Like, we sitting here telling her. We all, is at this point, it's me, Ken, and Jelly in there yelling at this girl. Like, you're tweaking the fuck out. Like, this man is on shrooms. He got a, a pum pum. And he could go off at any moment. Calm the fuck down. She goes, I don't give a fuck about no gun. And we just sitting here like. Girl, something is genuinely wrong with you. And then Kenny was telling her the whole, like, I understand why you fall out with everybody that you fall out with because you act like this. Babe, we're literally telling you to diffuse a situation. Calm down. You're making something more than what it is. All we're telling you is to calm down. And it's like she can't, she don't take construction criticism. She don't like to listen to nobody else and go in one ear, out the other. And that's really going to be her downfall. Like, so at that point, I was just kind of over it. And then I pulled Jelly to the side and told her, like, this is more I me and her got into it about that hair. And that's when I asked Jelly. Then she said $100 when she was at my house. And Jelly was like, yeah. And I told her, like, yeah, I'm glad you told me that. So I'm not tripping no more. But I didn't want to text you and bring you into it. And she was like, well, thank you for doing that because I don't like getting into shit like that. But I already knew. Like, I know Jelly. I, I can read somebody. Like, you're not the type of person. I'm not going to put you in no situation that you don't want to be in. 
So the girl finally get up. I'm, I don't know where I was. Was I in the bathroom? I don't know. I come back out wherever I was. She gone. They was like, she got up and was like, oh, fuck y'all. I'm leaving my brother in jail. He can't do nothing for me anyway. So we was all like, what? We was all laughing. And they was talking about some girl. Your brother's not good at what he did because <laughs> you did a hit and run and got caught. Or armed robbery and got caught. That's what he did. You did armed robbery and got caught. You were a horrible criminal. That's what we was laughing at. So this bitch gone. We was on there bobbing everything. Oh, dude, come take my phone. He was like, block that bitch. Don't ever hang out with her again. Do, 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 do. He was like, who was that nigga? And we was telling him, I promise you, there ain't no nigga that's going to crash out about this bitch. This bitch tweaking. She on the phone with a new nigga every day. These niggas do not want this bitch. I promise you. So he chilled out. He started laughing because he was like, oh, I'm thinking there's some nigga that's going to crash out about her. And we was like, no, never. So that goes by. She hit me up on... March 15th. We didn't talk like since then. I ended up unblocking her or whatever. Because I was like, she probably would text me about something. And the situation was serious, but I don't block people. So that's why I unblocked her number. She hit me up on March 15th, called me. I was asleep. She goes, Hey, are you selling your flight credit? Because I have flight credit from my flight to Cancun. So I'm like, Huh? No. I was asleep. So I'm like, Call me later. Because I couldn't process what was being said. But then when I woke up later, I realized she's like, she wanted me to sell my flight credit to her. She was like, oh, the flight's 400, I'll give you 200 cash. Fuck no, after that shit with that hair, I'm not doing no business with you, no trading, nothing, none of that shit. So she texted me back, she texted me later that night and was like, she goes, my bad, I was doing hair, but if you want me to send you half or do a freestyle for it, I can shugs and then I never texted her back because I was like I don't even want to say no because I know her attitude so I'm just not even going to reply then she texted me it's cool bookie I don't need it but I honestly forgot to even <laughs> acknowledge the message because I was going to say something but then she texted and was like fuck then I texted and was like my bad um you texted me too early yesterday I was sleeping I forgot and just left it at that so I hadn't talked to her, that was that morning, Saturday, March 16th. I didn't talk to her at all that motherfucking day. Then she texts me at 2 p.m. Keep in mind, y'all, oh, fuck, this is going to be two story times. Oh, I love this. So then she texts me at 2 p.m. and she's like, so when I see you in public, it's not going to be a warning. Just know when you feel that pop, just know who it's going to be from. Don't play with me. So I text her back like, girl, what? With a laughing emoji and I was blocked. So I'm at work at this time. So I'm going to Ken. I'm like, bitch, did Angel text you? Kennedy like, Angel texted me talking about some, you brought me around some weird ass bitches. I don't fuck with you. I'm like, who is, what the fuck is wrong with this bitch? Here she on some shit again. But this ties into another story time. So the reason, I feel like the reason why she texted me is because another bitch, let me find this motherfucking screenshot. How I had to go find it. So somebody texts my homegirl from a number talking about some y'all some damn hoes and bops. Ken cheating on G. Keep in mind, Kennedy is not with G no more. Then gonna fuck. Damn, can I say names? No. For this, I'm not gonna say names. Then gonna fuck unknown. Probably gonna end in an abortion hoe ass bitch. Then Amia over there like she ain't fuck Jalen. Even though Kirsten trying to be his bitch, even though he don't want her, Kirsten dumb as hell for fucking with Jaylen. He be posting that he don't fuck with her and his close friends. Y'all all hoes. Y'all don't deserve nothing but the chlamydia y'all passing around. I'm literally in bed with Jaylen and Amia call me and she's like, bitch, you seen these hoes talking shit about us? So I'm like, huh? Kennedy was at a party at the time. So I'm thinking Kennedy texted like the bitches at the party was talking shit. So I'm like, huh? I read the message and I'm, bitch, what? But then Amia was like, well, she chilling with her nigga. And I'm like, I'm chilling with mine. So like. We're gonna have a phone, we're gonna get to the bottom of this on our own time. So I got down to the bottom of who the fuck it was. It was some weird, basically, our job is messy. So it was some weird ass bitches at our job. Um, a girl named Tyler, she don't work there no more. She was telling a girl named Ashlyn, um, it was some he say, she say shit. Tyler was telling Ashlyn shit, and then Ashlyn got, went out, got drunk, got mad, and texted us that because she didn't like it. I don't know, what the fuck. But, but, 
Yeah, um, Tyler, if you ever see this video, because I know you still be watching me, you're weird as fuck, and I will never be cool with you ever again. Because she was sitting in a group chat with Ashlyn and this other girl. I forgot her name. Uh, but the other girl in the chat, I'm cool with her. I don't have no problem with her because she's a real-ass bitch. Sitting in the chat talking about some, she don't fuck with me. She never liked me. whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop Talking a lot, a whole lot of rah-rah about me. But bitch, you hate me because you can't beat me. That's what it seems like because I've never done shit to this bitch. Never. She's mad because of the nigga I'm fucking with and the nigga I'm fucking with used to fuck with her friend. But y'all, clock this T. You the one who told me to fuck with this nigga knowing he fucked with your friend. You the one who was sending me messages between you and this nigga him talking about how he wanted to fuck with me. Clock that T. Let's clock that T while you... She mad at her friend because her friend still cool with me. Talking about, oh, she fucks with a nigga that you fucked. Da, 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 da. But the friend didn't give a fuck. So I'm like, why are you so pressed about it? The friend don't give a fuck. She over this nigga. She not worried about this nigga. Why are you in our business? Why are you mad that we friends? Like, it's giving you want to fuck the nigga at this point. So yeah, that literally happened. This happened the night before Angel, the bitch, the hair bitch, texted me. So I'm like, hmm. These hoes then went texted Angel something and made her text me. Y'all want to know why I say that? Because Tyler wasn't my close friends around this time, and I did post to my close friends about the situation. Tyler was the main ho, sliding up, talking about, oh, that bitch is weird, this and this and that, and the third about the bitch. So I'm like, they have every right. You know, it's in the moment of heat. They want to get other bitches to beef with us. So the situation with the hair bitch is over by this time now. So now I'm moving on to this other story time that it didn't tie into. So yeah, we, I figured out who the hoe was that sent the message. I texted the bitch and said, you weird as fuck on my mama. Hold on, let me go to the messages because I think I still got them hoes. Let me screenshot them too. I didn't think these story times was going to tie in, but I love how they did because my story time is going to end. Ooh! Let me see. The fuck? Okay. I texted her, I said, you weird as fuck, oh, my mama grow, grow the fuck up, bitch. I had a typo. I said, cause ain't you the same bitch that fuck Kaylin after saying he had a disease? Ain't you the same bitch that wanna fuck Jalen while you being messy? Them bitches been talking down on your name. Never did like you. They not laughing with you, love. They laughing at you. Trust, talking about chlamydia. You the only one burning and we all know that. You know this, cause you told us your pussy be burning. What's T, ho? Then, she gonna text me back talking about something. Who is this and what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, hell no, bitch. Ain't nobody send y'all a fucking message. Why the fuck you assume it's me? I didn't say nothing about a message. Clock that T. You snitch on yourself, you dumbass bitch. Anyways, she goes, y'all think I'm sitting here worried about y'all. Y'all crazy as fuck. Y'all all dismissed. Go fuck with another bitch, not me, and figure out who really sent this shit behind y'all back because y'all got the wrong one. Babes, you already knew who was sending shit behind our back. So keep in mind, all this is like some mess work. So we at work the next day. It's still going on. Everybody at work has their opinions. And I won't say like they picking their sides, but like they friends with the other bitches and then they friends with us. So it's just, it's a lot going on. So uh, our managers ended up pulling me, Ken, and Layla to the back to have a conversation because me and Ken did think it was Layla who was being messy. And we did um, argue with Layla a bit about it. But then we found out it wasn't Layla. It was a girl named Lay. And... You know, we did say our apologies to Layla. She was mad as fuck. She was like, y'all bitches were never my friends. Y'all treat me like shit. It was like, girl, what? You would be mad as fuck too if that shit, you see some shit in the chat and it's like a nickname for your name. You'd be mad as fuck too thinking it was us. Like, of course we're going to come to your ass to check you. So yeah, disclaimer, we cool with Layla. We don't got no beef with Layla. We all back a Kiki and bobbing like we was before because this shit was some petty ass mess. So, that same day, right after we have that conversation in the back of Layla, the Ashlyn bitch who sent the message shows up to work. But now, at this point, I don't give a fuck about you and Ken's prior beef. That'll have to be a story time for, for, from Kennedy for y'all because Ashlyn and Kennedy have an ongoing beef. They used to be best friends. They feel like that's an ongoing beef, but that's her story to tell. I don't give a fuck about your beef with Kennedy, bitch. That message you sent, you had my name in that message more than anybody's name. So, you got a lot of animosity towards me. And baby, you know what's, you know what that mean. So my nigga, if I ever see this bitch, I'm slapping the shit out of this hoe. I seen that bitch the next day. She pull up to our job in a bonnet and some sweats on some shit. Like she was checking some shit. But the, what the bitch was trying to do was come in and be like, oh, I checked them hoes. They didn't do nothing. She was trying to be on that type of timing, you know? 
babe, you're not going to be on that type of timing with me. Because I was up front. She didn't think I was going to be up front. Because she didn't walk around. You didn't come in there and look for Kennedy like you claimed you did to your friends. You walked to the host stand. You yelled at Layla. You didn't make eye contact with me. You yelled at Layla. Layla was like, she talking to me? I'm looking at Layla like, the fuck is T? Like, bitch, you supposed to be arguing with me. So I walk to the back fast as fuck. I tell Kennedy that bitch up there. So Kennedy started running to the front. She's trying to get the bitch. My manager grabbed Kennedy, so I swoop behind them. The bitch leaving at this point. I follow this bitch to her car. They tell her my nigga Kirsten went outside. She done went outside. I met this bitch car like, so what's T? Like, you got a problem with me? Like, what's up? I want to know. My intentions were never to go out there to fight this hoe because at the end of the day, I understand why you was being messy because you trying to show up for your friends and your friends trying to show up for you and whoop, whoop, whoop. It's just some he say, she say shit. Keep in mind, y'all, the Tyler girl I was talking about, she don't even live out here no more. This bitch moved back to New York in December. Fuck are you being messy for in a whole different time zone? So I'm like, so what's T like? She goes, I don't have no problem with you. So I'm like, are you going to apologize then? You don't have a problem with me, but you brought me in that shit. Whatever the fuck you and Kennedy and Amia got going on, keep that between you, Kennedy and Amia. Don't bring me in it just because I'm their friend. She goes, no, I'm not going to apologize. So I say, oh, okay. So she tried to get in her car and leave, y'all. I slammed this bitch's leg in her car door, opened the door, and then I start running this bitch shit in. She's sitting in her seat. I'll show y'all. She's sitting in the seat, lean back, doing this. Kicking me in the seat, but I don't give a fuck. I'm sitting right here, <laughs> run this bitch shit in. I don't give a fuck. Ain't every kick. My nigga was standing back there, so he ended up pulling me off of her, and he bucked at the bitch. He got in the car and was like, stop that shit. I don't know what the fuck he said, but I was mad as fuck, so I couldn't even laugh, but now I'm laughing at the shit. So he bucked at the bitch, and then I started walking back in, and he just smiling hard as fuck, like, what the fuck? So we get in. I'm mad. He's smiling. Everybody like, what the fuck happened? He like, she just beat this bitch ass. I can't just fuck that. Tell everybody, she beat this bitch ass. Everybody at work like, oh, Kirsten, you're a fighter? Keep in mind, y'all, I've been a fighter. I just, I'm not a vocal ass bitch about that shit. I'm not one of them bitches you gonna see when it's time to see. So she texted me. No marks nowhere, bitch. Try to sneak me in a car and had your nigga hit me. Bitch, you a weak hoe and tell Ken I got something for her, too. I didn't sneak you. You was looking right at me, bitch. You seen me slam your leg in the door. You seen me walk around and open your door. You seen me... <laughs> bitch, never snuck you. Nigga never touched you. Now you just making up shit. Like, stop being delusional, hoe. That nigga bucked at your ass. He did tell me he wanted to hit you. But then I would have been mad at him if he hit you. Because then I would have to be his ass because I don't even play like that. Then... Oh, my God. Bro. This she was like, tell your nigga don't fucking punch me. I'm like, you came for Ken and didn't even see her. She goes, bitch broke one nail. I have no marks. My pimple patches didn't even come off. Babes, I wasn't scratching your face. I was punching you in your shit. <laughs> Let's keep it cute. She goes, check your friend Tyler. Tell her stop starting shit. I would have never even came. Babes, I done already got into it with Tyler. But Tyler's your friend. Keep in mind, she's on FaceTime with Tyler while I'm whooping her ass. So your friend got you in this shit. Then your friend sat on the phone while you got your ass beat. Ha ha. So, I told, Tara told her, keep um, Jalen and my her motherfucking mouth because that's Jalen's sister or whatever. What the fuck is they doing? So she was like, keep Jalen and my her mouth. Woo, woo, woo. She goes, go kill yourselves. Next fight is one-on-one -on -one with Ken. Everyone else can get the police called on them. So we talked, we was all standing there like, tell that bitch come back. Cause at this point, damn near everybody wanna fight this. So they was like, tell that bitch come back. Tell her come back. And then Ken texted her off my phone, but she had blocked me again. Cool. So we thinking the situation over, but then Ken decides, I don't have no more screenshots for y'all. So don't be yelling at me. Ken decides to call Adi. And that was Ashton's friend. Because, you know, some of the bitches that we beef with got real ass friends that's going to be the one to be like, but she told me this on some shit. So we called Adi. Adi spill it all to Ken like, oh, she said she don't fuck with y'all because y'all been linking with her ex. Keep in mind, I don't know nothing about this phone call, but Ken calls me, asks me to the call. Don't even tell me Adi on the call. She goes, Kirsten, do, do you know D? So I'm like, who the fuck is D? Confused as fuck. Adi in the back like, no fucking way. Adi's convinced that Ashlyn don't like us because we've been hanging with her ex. I don't know her ex. Ken knows her ex because her and Ken are best friends, but I'm like, who is D? Like, what's his real name? They say his real name. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck that is. So Adi's like, this bitch lied? So she started telling us all the other shit she lied about and like why she don't fuck with us. And whoop, whoop. They end up calling D, XD, do you know these bitches? Like, said our names. He was like, I only know Ken. I don't know these hoes. 
So Adi's just amazed. So it gets to the point where she's like, well, y'all mute. I'm finna add Ashley to the call and ask Ashley. Ashley get on the call. She goes, Ashley, so why did you lie to me about um, them hanging out with D and shit? So she goes, what? Who called you? She goes, um, Ken called me. Why the fuck did you answer the phone for that bitch? Why is she calling you? I'm finna call D and check him because he did hang out with them bitches and he fucked one of them. So like the bitches making up stories and believing these stories. So we all kind of like, huh? So all this imaginary ass beef is because of a story you made up in your head. And it's also because of Tyler too. Tyler is messy as fuck. But I've been with Tyler was messy when me and Tyler was cool because all the motherfuckers that Tyler's still cool and now she be talking shit about them. So I'm not shocked that she was talking shit about me, talking about she never liked me, she can't stand me. Sound like you wanna be me. But yeah. So we all get off that phone call and then it's just me, Ken, and Adi again. And we like, well shit, since Ashlyn is so mad that me, Ken, and Amia is hanging out, we gonna start hanging out with Adi. And that's what the fuck we did. We took Adi in, cause Ashlyn used to be mean as fuck to Adi. I went out with them one day and she was in the car bullying this bitch. If y'all know Adi, she has a really vibrant personality and you need to be around people that can, you know, absorb that and have that same energy with you. And Ashlyn is not that bitch. So yeah, that was that. That was basically the end of that story time. It's really another story time, but we ain't finished that episode yet. That episode is currently still ongoing. So I'm gonna have to hit y'all with that story time when it finishes. But that was basically that. I know the story time was all over the place. It was literally only supposed to be that one. It was unexpected and the other one came in. So I don't blame y'all if y'all didn't watch the whole video. But yeah, that's pretty much tea, y'all. So to give y'all a little rundown at the end of the video, me and Kennedy homegirls at Angel was Kennedy's homegirl. She brought her around us. Angel was a bipolar delusional ass, short term memory having ass hoe that just needed to be cut off immediately. And then Ashlyn used to be Ken's best friend, but we all worked with Ashlyn. Tyler used to work with us, but Tyler moved in December, and ever since she moved in December, she cut everybody off. She's just been extremely messy since. Yeah, that's basically it. It's a lot of other story times y'all need to like understand a lot of these people' names and backstories, but I'm only give it to y'all if y'all want it, cause y'all know me. I don't give a fuck. Y'all see how I said these people' names? I only blurred out one name because I didn't need to bring his name up into this because you know. Happy home and shit like that. Oh. Yeah. That was really all for this video. Don't be on my dick in the comments because y'all be dick eating. Sometimes y'all don't even be watching story time. Y'all be like, oh, you were being mean. You were this. You were that. Bitch, did you watch the video? Did you listen to what the fuck I said? And I naturally talk like this and act like this. So I only hang around people that act like this. Like me and Kennedy talk shit to each other all motherfucking day. All day. But that's my home girl. She know I'm playing with her and I know she playing with me. So if y'all are watching this video and y'all like, oh, I could tell by how you were in the video, you're really mean and aggressive. Shut the fuck up. Ugh. But yeah.